Today we're going to do hiding place. Uh, right up there with my core book for me. Just, you know, kind of a notch or two down, but really high. It's one of my, you've absolutely got to read it books. The very top of the must reads. I just I can't, I don't know how you become this kind of person. That's, that's what I want to be. I, I want to be like them. I want to be, I mean, if I could just be Corey. I mean, Betsy, I don't know. She's probably way out of my league. But if I could be kind of like Corey, there's this incredible moment where um, she's in the home of a Jewish family. And they're playing with their kids. And they're these incredibly nice people. And, you know, she knows what's going on. She knows the Jews are escaping into Holland. I don't know if you know any. You may not know anything about the hiding place. It's World War II. It's Holland. It's a true story. It's autobiographical. Um, it's about a family that harbored Jews in their home. And uh, you can look at the author review to learn a little bit more about their family. I obviously were named after them, Tempum Institute. We think they're incredible. And so these are really, really key reads. But um, she's in this home with this Jewish family. And the kids... So they send the kids up to bed up to bed and the kids are upstairs and she hears this voice says this, this childish voice pipes down daddy you didn't tuck us in mr hemster was on his feet in an instant with an apology to his wife and me he hurried upstairs in a minute we heard a game of hide and seek going and the shrill laughter of two children that was all nothing had changed Mrs. Heemster continued with her recipe for stretching the tea ration with rose leaves, and yet everything was changed. For in that instant, reality broke through the numbness that had grown in me since the invasion, and at any minute, there might be a rap on this door. These children, this mother and father, might be ordered to the back of a truck. Dr. Hemster came back to the living room, and the conversation rambled on, but under the words, a prayer was forming in my heart. Lord Jesus... I offer myself for your people <clears throat> in any way, any place, any time. Um, you know, she didn't have to. Her, you know, her life would just would have gone on. She wasn't any 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 danger. There's this beautiful moment where they're hiding Jews, and. A pastor drops by and a Jewish mother has just dropped by and she's got a newborn baby and and they're a huge they're a huge threat because babies will cry and then you're you're caught in an instant you know and so she knows she's got to get this baby and her mother out of the city as fast as possible and somewhere safe and so this pastor shows up and she's thinking perfect God's orchestrated it he showed up he can help us. He'll take, he'll take her with him. He lives out in the country. It'll be perfect. And so she goes out on a limb and she invites him back to the kitchen and she starts talking to him and asks him, you know, well, this Jewish woman just came in and is there any way you could take her with you? And he's just taken back and he's all, he's almost offended that she would ask him to help. And she's, he's really just dumbstruck that, you know, that they're involved in this kind of work. It's, Corey, what are you doing? Your your family could be taken. Your father, I mean, think about your father. He's so old. And, and just think what would happen if he went to prison. And just then, father, you know, walks in. And he takes the baby in his hands. And he looks at this pastor and he says, You say we might lose our lives for this child. That would be the greatest honor that could come to my family. They're just... You know, I keep thinking about all the people that lived in Harlem and that lived in Holland and that in, that lived in other occupied countries, and I think, why did they help? You know, why weren't they of that caliber? Why didn't they have enough character? Why, you know, father died in prison. Betsy died in a concentration camp, for heaven's sake, and yet they were willing to do it. They didn't even know. They were perfect strangers, and I just think, you know, I if there's any way that I can be 
if I can at least point my children in this direction, if I can, if I can remind them of what's important, that's why, that's why we read. That, that's what it's about, you know? It's, life is hard enough. So read things that will inspire you. Read things that will help you, that will help you find answers to your problems, that will, that will uplift you and, and calm your soul, you know? Anyway, this is, you just got to read it. And, um, and I hope that it blesses you like it's blessed my life. And I hope that you find something there that, that can be a light to you, that can show you a little bit more about love or a little bit more about sacrifice or a little bit more about who you are. Um, because this is the kind of book that has the power to do that. So read it, love it, and we'll see you next time.